Hello. Welcome to Sleepy Pines Sleep Clinic. How may I help you? Okay. Having some issues falling asleep. All right. We can definitely help you out here with that. Have you ever been to a sleep clinic before? No? All right. Well, I can go over with you briefly about our clinic here and what exactly we do. And then after that, if you would like, I can make you an appointment. Okay. So we are obviously a sleep clinic and we are actually a same day sleep clinic. Meaning if you are a new client with us, we can potentially see you same day. All right, and you would be a walk-in. So as long as you meet our checklist that we have here, and as long as we have an opening for you, we can see you. All right, so we do not prescribe medications here. We like to have a more holistic approach. All right, so I don't know if that's important to you or not, but if it's not, then as I said, we can definitely help you out. Um, so what we do is you spend the night here with us. And as you are sleeping, we monitor certain things. And we assess all of your sleep issues. And then we formulate a personalized solution. Made, obviously, specifically for you. To help with all of those sleep issues that you may have. All right. So, and we will be asking you, obviously, a lot of more in-depth questions if you do go through with your appointment today. All right. And did you have any questions for me so far? No? All right. So, would you like to schedule your sleep appointment? Okay. So, let me just pull up the new patient tab here. Okay. Let's go ahead and get your first name. And your last name. Date of birth. And what's a good telephone number for you? Okay. Thank you. And an email address? Okay. And then can I please get an emergency contact just in case? What's a good telephone number for them? All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. And then I just need to ask if you... Um, I need to go through a few things to ensure that you'll be getting an accurate sleep assessment with us. So, did you happen to take a nap today? No? Alright. That can interfere with the sleep study. So, we do need to ask. And when was the last time, the last time that you had a caffeinated beverage? Okay. No, that should not be a problem at all. And how about... Um, an alcoholic beverage. When was the last time about? Okay. Right. And let me see. Um, do you smoke? No? Okay, good. And 
are you pregnant? No, okay. So, you are good to go to move forward with your sleep study if you would like. Okay. Alright. So, I will go ahead and make an official appointment for you tonight. And, since it is so late in the day, um, we can actually go ahead and start the process if you would like, so make it for right now. Alright. So we like to give you about an hour to wind down in your room and prepare yourself for bed. So after um, that hour, it'll be putting us at about 9 o'clock. Okay. So that's officially when your sleep study will begin. Um, it does not mean that you need to be asleep by 9 o'clock. It just means that you need to be um, basically in your bed and we will be hooking you up with um, some monitoring equipment. Okay, so that all that, that's all that that means is that we are ready to go by 9 o'clock. Okay. And there is a phone charger in the room already for you. And did you happen to bring an overnight bag? No? Okay. That's no problem. We usually like for people to bring that with them. But um, we do have things like toothbrushes and face wash, things like that. So since you didn't bring a bag, we'll go ahead and make a list real quick of some things that you need. And as long as you aren't on any medication that you didn't bring, um, we should be able to provide everything. All right. So what are some things that you'll be needing tonight? Toothbrush and toothpaste? Okay. And what else? A face wash? Okay. No problem. Anything else? Some moisturizer? Okay. No problem at all. And then we do have um, shampoo, conditioner, and body wash in the bathroom. Alright. And we also have fresh towels and washcloths as well. Okay. And our rooms do not have alarm clocks. Most people just use their phones. But if you do need an alarm clock, we do have some in the back and I can grab you one. You won't be needing one? Okay. And we do not wake you up in the morning unless you request that we do so. Um, most people just set an alarm on their phone, or you can take your time waking up in the morning if you don't need to be anywhere. It's no problem at all. And we do have juice and coffee and some snacks here in the office for when you leave tomorrow to give you just like a little breakfast to get through until you can get to where you're going. Alright. No problem. Okay, so you are all set for your appointment tonight at 9 o'clock. So now that we are all set, I will go ahead and gather the items that you'll be requiring tonight. And first I will take you back and show you your room, okay? Let you get settled a little bit, then I'll bring the items back to you. And then once I'm back there, we will go over a more detailed questionnaire to kind of see where you're at with your sleep. Okay, very good. So if you just want to follow me, I'll take you back to your room. Okay. Hello again. How are you liking your room? Good. Yes, we like to keep our rooms nice and cool and dark and as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you need to adjust the temperature, there is a thermostat over there where you can do so. Okay. 
All right, so I went ahead and grabbed the items that you asked for. I have a toothbrush for you. Okay. And I grabbed you some toothpaste. And also a face wash. And a moisturizer. Okay. Did you think of anything else that you might need for tonight? No? Alright. Just let us know, okay? Okay. I'm going to be putting these things into a little baggie for you. set all this over here aside for you. Okay, so now we need to go over um, some questions so that I can get a good um, understanding of the issues that you're having and what a typical um, night's sleep looks like for you. Okay? And I wanted to go over what exactly we'll be monitoring with you. So, while you are sleeping, we have um, electrodes connected to you and a couple of other things. We do not use any needles, okay? So, what we monitor is your heart and breathing rate. We monitor and measure eye movement and body movement. And then we also monitor snoring, if any. Okay? And then we also monitor your oxygen levels in your blood. Okay. Just wanted to make you aware of a little bit about what we do. And we do have a camera up there that will be watching you while you sleep. And that's just so we can see how much you toss and turn and exactly what it is your body does. And we do have a microphone in here as well so that we, if you do snore, we can hear the patterns and if you possibly have something like sleep apnea, that'll help us to um, assess that issue if you have it. Okay. So I know it's a little creepy, but these are all things that are very important so that we can give you a clear assessment. All right. And since you said you didn't bring an overnight bag, I did leave you a pair of fresh pajamas over there on your table, okay? And they are new, sealed in a bag. Okay, no problem. All right. So we're going to go... Uh, over our, our little question here that we have. So if you want to get nice and comfortable, it's going to take a couple minutes. Alright, so first question. Can you tell me, um, can you briefly go over with me a little bit about your nightly routine? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And that's about the same every night? For the most part. Okay. And do you take anything to help you sleep? No? Alright. Yeah, it could be medications. Um, some people take Benadryl sometimes to help them get nice and sleepy. Um, you know, I don't know if you drink tea to help you sleep. Anything like that that you've tried? No? Alright. And then a big reason why I'm asking is so that we can know what you have tried and what you haven't so that maybe we can suggest things such as tea or things like that. 
And that brings me to your, to my next question. Do you take any medications at all? No? All right. And how many nights a week would you say that you have trouble falling asleep? Okay. So it seems like most nights. All right. Sorry to hear that. And so would you say that your issue is more falling asleep or staying asleep? Okay, so your main concern is falling asleep. All right. And then once you are asleep, do you ever have issues at all with waking up? Not really? Okay, good. All right, well, that's good to know. And let's see, what else do we need? Okay, and then what time do you usually go to bed at night? So, you try to aim for around 11 p.m.? Gotcha. And do you have a job that is stressful that might interfere with things such as a normal sleep schedule, such things as like a um, shift that changes often or anything like that? Okay, gotcha. Yes, it can play a very big role um, in terms of, you know, a disruption in our sleep pattern. Yeah. Okay. And then... Okay. And what time do you usually wake up? Okay. And is that about the same time every day? It varies. Okay. So, you typically then would get about five to six hours of sleep per night on a good night? Okay. Gotcha. All right. Okay. And then have you ever been um, diagnosed by a doctor with sleep apnea or any kind of sleeping disorder? No? All right. Have you ever been to a doctor to um, be tested for those things? No? All right. That's why you're here today, right? Okay. Okay. And then... I know you haven't been diagnosed um, by a doctor, but do you have anyone in your family that suffers from insomnia? You do? Okay. And who would that be? Okay, gotcha. All right. And do you use anything to help you sleep at night, like an oil diffuser, um, a white noise sound machine, um, humidifier, anything like that? You use a sound machine? Okay. All right. And then, how do you prefer to sleep at night? Do you like your room warmer or cooler? Cooler? Okay. And how many pillows do you sleep with at night? Two. Okay. Okay. And tell me a little bit about your mattress. Is it on the firmer side or the softer side? It's it's a little softer. Okay. Okay. And do you sleep with a partner? Okay. Yeah, the reason I have to ask that is because um, just in case maybe your partner um, has some bad sleeping habits, that could obviously affect your sleep as well. Okay. Good to know. Now, you said you um, don't really wake up in the middle of the night, but has there ever been an, a time where you've woken up and felt like you needed to, like, catch your breath? 
Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, like kind of just like an out of breath type of feeling. Okay. And do you snore that you're aware of? All right. Have you ever woken yourself up uh, because of your snoring? Not that you're aware of? Okay. All right. And then, does your back ever hurt when you wake up in the morning? Sometimes? Okay. Could be a sign that you are uh, that you are sleeping on the wrong type of mattress. Okay. If you don't typically experience back pain throughout the day and only when you wake up, that could be a big sign that you need to purchase a firmer mattress. All right. And then, do you have any allergies to medications or anything else that we should be aware of? No. Okay. And then I know I asked you what, uh, around what time your bedtime is, is that, do you go to sleep at that time about every night? Okay. Alright. Do you take melatonin? Okay. Yeah, there are some, uh, mixed feelings about melatonin. Um, for some people, it does wonders. Uh, some people take it every night as part of their routine. Some people only take it when they feel like they need some extra help going to sleep that night. Um, and then there are some people who do not believe in taking melatonin at all um, for a fear that um, if you take it on like a regular basis or too much, that it could prevent your body um, from making its natural melatonin. Right, so there's some mixed feelings on it. Um, I think it's fine as long as you don't overdo it, obviously. Okay, so yeah, if you don't take it, um, I would suggest maybe trying it just to see if it helps. Okay, it's not going to hurt you to try it. Um, and then about how long does it take you to fall asleep at night? Okay. Yeah, that's well um, over the average. It's usually around 30 minutes that it takes as the average to fall asleep. Okay, so an hour is, that's a long time, yeah. Okay. And then, were there any major concerns that you had that you wanted to discuss with me today? Okay. So you just really want that help to fall asleep. Gotcha. Okay. So there are a few things that we can do. Um, like I said, you could try taking the melatonin, but we will be monitoring you in, you know, the first hour that it takes you to fall asleep, obviously, and kind of seeing what's going on. I want you to try to not have any anxiety about being watched. Um, it's just going to be me watching you, no one else. So, you know, I'm just going to be looking for specific body movements and some habits maybe that I see that we can change or alter a little bit. And then based off of what I see, and by the way, I'm not going to be suggesting anything. Um, I just want this to be a typical night for you and what you do every single night. And then like I said, I will be suggesting certain things that I think would very much benefit you. All right. So I'm all done um, with the questions. And before we get you all hooked up to the monitors, I just want to briefly check your eyes, okay? So I'm just going to be doing a simple little swing test with my flashlight. It just has this gentle blue light on the end of it, but please let me know if it's too bright for you. Okay.
Okay, so if you could just pick a spot on my face to stare at, and I'm going to be checking your dilation and how your pupils are reacting, okay? It's going to be going back and forth here. Just keep your eyes on that one spot on my face. Very good. sure that everything is reacting properly. I'm so going to be checking for any spotting or redness. Back and forth here. Great job. Okay, I'm going to be looking at the other eye now. So just keep your eyes on the spot on my face. It bothering you at all? Okay. Okay. Sorry if I just covered up the spot that you were focusing on. Just keep trying to focus. Don't be afraid to blink, by the way. <laughs> Alright. Everything looks pretty good. Just going to lightly... So everything looks fantastic. I'm just gonna make a note on your chart real quick. Do you know what your height is? Okay. And what about your weight? And then I'll be having a nurse come in here shortly after we're done to check all your vitals. All right. All right. And how would you describe your diet? Is it rich in whole unprocessed foods or is it on the poor side of the scale, eating a lot of fast food, stuff like that? Okay. All right. Yeah, not the best diet I've heard of. Definitely not the worst either. Um, our diet can play a very large role in how our bodies properly shut down for sleep or don't properly shut down for sleep. Um, another big factor is what time our last meal is compared to the time that we put our heads on the pillow at night. So if you eat a large meal late at night and then you try to go to sleep shortly after, um, that's going to be difficult for your body to do. Um, it doesn't typically like when we do that. So, um, when would you say you have your last meal at night? Okay. All right. So that is about an hour before bedtime. Um, not very idea ideal. I typically would like um, my patients to have their last meal of the day um, at least three hours before bedtime. That way you are still moving around throughout um, that time before bed so that you can properly digest everything. Okay. So that's something that we can try and something I'll definitely put, put on your plan. Okay that I'm making up for you already. Okay. Okay. Um, 
All right, so we are pretty much done here. What I'm going to have you do now is get ready for bed. I'm going to be leaving the room after this, and you have a nice bathroom over there to use. And there's a shower in there, and all of the fresh linens and soap that you could possibly need. And I put, um, as I said, some pajamas over there. So once you hop into your PJs and brush your teeth and are all ready for bed, um, there is a button over there on your bed that you can push and that alerts the nurse that you are ready to, for her to come in and check all of your vitals. And then once uh, she's done with that, I will be coming back in and I'm going to be placing electrodes on your head, okay? So we'll have two here and two here. And then I'll also be hooking you up to a couple other monitoring systems, but as I said, absolutely no needles are involved, okay? Alright, and then um, we will not be turning on the cameras or the microphone until you are all ready in bed and let us know that you are ready. Alright, so nothing will be on at any time. You will have full privacy until you say so. Okay. Alright, did you have any questions or concerns for me about anything at all? Alright. Well, I'm so glad that we were able to get you in to see us today. I'm confident that we are going to figure out what's going on with you and come up with an excellent solution for you. So I am going to take my laptop with all of my notes and I will go let the nurse ready that you will be ready to have your vitals taken shortly. Okay, well it was so nice meeting you. Please get nice and comfy and ready for bed and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, bye.